मार दिया वहाँ के रुक जाएंगे पीछे कोई आगे कर देगा बस चलती है यार लोग दसा नहीं पता चलता है यार मजा लाइक इट्स गुड बहुत अच्छी गाड़ी है वेरी नाइस Hi guys and welcome to another vlog. I am driving this. This is the MG Gloucester. It's a full size SUV like obviously you can see that at the moment. Straight away we are going to be opening the engine bay of this vehicle. I opened it so well in the morning. Obviously it gets hydraulic struts. That's the engine. It says MG twin turbo right there. And of course it's got insulation and it's got this sort of treatment for I think heat absorption probably. But yeah, the engine bay is massive. Let's close this straight away. and you can see the design of this car is actually massive i know that's what she said is going to happen a lot of times in this vlog but you can see the design is actually quite nice because this car is very intimidating it is big it is just big in fact if i tell you how big it is you get shocked because the car is actually wider than the toyota fortuner it's longer than a ford endeavor it's taller than a bmw x7 yeah that's right okay so you can see this is the indicator of the car Actually, that's where the LED DRL is, but it doesn't get the dynamic swipe indicators. Unfortunately, neither the front, neither the rear. Now, this is actually a halogen. Yeah, that's right, a halogen lamp. So it's not a LED lamp, unfortunately, but it gets the cornering function. Now, of course, the lights look nice. They get full LED tech. In fact, adaptive lights. It says full LED tech right there, and uh, you see, it gets a projector setup as well. It's really nice and bright. This is the LED DRL of the vehicle. It gets this chrome treatment down. Meanwhile, these are functional air winglets, winglets, air curtains, whatever you want to call it. They're actually functional. Okay, I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, they are functional. You get the chrome treatment in the front. A massive MG grill. Yeah, the grill is quite big. And again, it gets this uh, sort of silver finish. That's not chrome. That's silver. But there's chrome in between as well. MG logo boldly put up front, and obviously you get a front parking camera too. Now coming to the side, you realize that the car is massive again. I know, I know, it's going to happen a lot of time, but the I mean it's almost 5 meters in length almost 3 meters in wheelbase so yeah the size is humongous of this car and uh, the wheels are actually 19 inches yes that's right 19 inch 19 inch me 19 inch 19 inches wheel 19 inch wheels 19 inch wheels on this particular car and the size of the wheels happen to be 255 55 19 and i love the design of the alloy wheels it gets this dual tone treatment which looks really very nice as well and these are continental tires which are not really that great off the road yeah the air curtains there they are you can see that very much functional on this car it says brit dynamic right there along with the union jack and here you can see two things yeah one is obviously for the 360 degree parking camera and the other is a thing which projects on the road the mg logo at night actually it projects it in the day also but you can't really see it in the day now you get a side footstep and you get chrome outside door mirror door, door, door you get chrome outside door handles along with this silver finishing this is not chrome this is silverish i think yeah it's silverish okay and the mirrors are massive again the size of the mirrors is like crazy you obviously get the indicator here as well and they've played with the color so gloss black no this is not gloss black this is actually the body color you get the silver finishing and you get some sort of finishing here as well of course car looks really intimidating on the road because the size is something which is the draw of this car it is the highlight of this particular car I would have loved to show you the roof, for which I'll have to actually climb from here. I obviously, get zero discs, so we'll climb from here. And ah, uh, yeah, this is the roof of the car, and it gets these roof rails, which I don't think are functional. At least they don't feel functional to me. And a massive panoramic roof as well, which actually the blinds have been opened right now, so that there's a lot more light on the inside. At the rear, uh, I think it's a little overdone because too many badges. I mean, Gloucester's written so big, so big, so big that you can actually read this 50 kilometers away, Gloucester. Yeah, that's right. It says four-wheel drive, ADAS. ADAS stands for Advanced Driver Assistance Systems, and it says internet inside, of course, because every MG car says the same. Now, the lights actually look nice. These are LED lights. I will show you the indicator here. So again, no dynamic swipe indicator. on this car there is a spoiler which is nicely integrated there is a high mounted stop lamp this is of course the rear wiper of the car the mg logo where is the camera okay there is the camera of the car and uh, the number plate light is also on at the moment rear parking sensors the bumper is actually finished in plastic it's not painted and uh, there is a request sensor somewhere here to open the tailgate as well meanwhile sort of a diffuser treatment but it gets quad exhaust and trust me they are not quad exhaust because they actually two exhaust but they've put four outlets just to make it look more appealing somehow which i will show you right away so as you can see here on the inside okay, there is actually one exhaust 
so you can say more or less the right side one is functional and on the other side the left side one is functional let's see the underbody of the car yeah there's a spare wheel which happens to be a full size spare wheel and it is actually an alloy yeah that's really very nice thankfully they did not do cost cutting there because usually brands do that they have the excuse that there's no space to keep the spare wheel that's why they're putting a smaller one i, I don't know the placement of the exhaust is not going into either of these pipes so it's just like showcase nothing more than that anyways let's uh, see the car from the other side which means that you have to tread really very carefully because you don't have adas the car does looks really nice i like the presence of the car on the road let's open the boot of the vehicle which is pressing a button obviously it's got a power tailgate and the boot is actually quite big even with the third row up that's the length of the car that's how big the car is that you have almost 330 or something liters of space already right now okay there's a hook here which i think it turns or something of that sort there's a light placement there okay this is the hook you can actually turn it if you want and uh, there is a 12 volt charging socket as well if you want to recline the seats no problem just press this button okay this is actually you can change the recline angle of the last row as well and you can drop it also if you so wish here you go there it's a 60 40 split which means that you can increase the boot cannon capacity in fact you can do it like this as well yeah this is actually both ways it works somehow here i am kind of dropping it and there you see the boot is massive now oh actually there's a lot of luggage carrying space in fact if mg's hector was in that big it could have also fit in here but of course the hector is also a massive car in terms of size so it cannot fit in there of course put it back it's so easy to operate this although the ford endeavor gets a electric function for all this yeah powered function which makes it even more easier to put the seat up and down as well okay let's close this there's a button here pressing it and there it closes power tailgate for the win it is so soothing and nice to use the power tailgate i love it all right now request sensor is on both the sides however you have to press a button you just don't put your hand and it opens it doesn't happen that way unfortunately all right now uh, what am i showing you here okay so that seat is almost all the way behind we just going to move the seat ahead and behind just to show you how much space is on offer so this is when the seat is all the way behind okay Now if I want to pamper the last row of occupants what do I do I can move the seat all the way ahead as well yes in order to do that here you see one second let me give it another push yeah that is touching the front seat almost and I almost did it with one hand almost I would say one hand operation very slick to use you see you can this this railing moves all the way you see there's just so much play here which means that the last row of occupants have a lot of space but obviously it's not practical to put the seat all the way high so we're going to push it back and yeah we push it further back in fact I'll push it all the way back that's about it so yeah definitely there's good amount of space in all the rows and this thing also lights up at night it says mg with this sort of a flag treatment side footstep is always a nice thing to get inside such cars but the door box is actually on the smaller side is surprising not only at the rear but at the front as well there's some storage space here too all the windows get one touch up and down yeah one touch up down for all the windows and let me tell you that the windows are massive and you see the speed at which they roll up and down it's actually quite fast i'm surprised okay i have to show you another thing the seat belt mechanism at the bottom this should have been sort of hidden it's kind of exposed and there's no scooped out seat back here but there is a magazine holder as well now you see the roof is big yeah that's big okay big is the theme here fessel why are we even talking about big 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 all the time did i tell you that it gets adaptive lights of course it gets adaptive lights Let's get inside the rear. Now the doors actually don't feel too heavy. They don't feel too light either. They're big enough, and I think this is for the tweeter. This is for the speaker. Get the leather treatment, nice stitching, and this cross stitching and whatever also looks pretty nice. Although for this price point, and at least for our Indian condition climate, rather obviously the place where I am right now, there should have been a sun blind here as well. Now to get inside is easy because there's a handle. You can just you know just walk into the car. Literally, you can walk into the car. Now. How do you get to the last row of seats? First and foremost, it doesn't have a tumble function that you press a button and it tumbles. No, it doesn't happen like that. For going into the last row, you have to actually walk in through like this. Yeah, I just put Google Maps so it will just make it easier for me to reach my destination. Okay, the floor is almost flat and we are just going to walk in right now. So there is actually good amount of first space in the center to actually walk inside. Now this is the last row of the seats and uh, see there is actually decent amount of space on offer, but under the support is actually not there only it's missing only you see there is no under thigh support because your knees are almost close to your chest now of course because i don't go to the gym i don't have any chest as such so my knees are not that close to my chest but yes there is no space on offer at, at least no under thigh support on offer at least there's space on offer 
Headroom is just about adequate for someone as tall as me, but under thigh support really very lacking here, unfortunately. So not really comfortable for the last row of passengers unless they are kids or not tall. There's a cup holder right there. And uh, this is obviously, I think, for the seatbelt mechanism. This is a 12 volt charging socket. Probably they could have swapped it for a USB. And uh, this thing opens for sure. I don't know how it does. So, <laughs> and you can actually, yeah, hook onto your luggage as well. That's also a practical bit. What is this fake carbon fiber finish? There's a USB charging port here in the last row as well. So, yes, that's kind of practical. And there are AC vents on the top. So, everywhere, you get four AC vents on the top. There's none in the center. And that's how the air conditioning works for the rear passengers. Of course, it gets a three zone climate control system. This is the light of the car, the rear light. And uh, let's just get out from here because the last row, although good in terms of, uh, you know, space, under that support is something which really disappointed me. You get adjustable headrest for two passengers, which means that this is more of a six seater. That is four plus two, four means uh, four adults and two children. Now sitting into this seat, let me tell you, the seat is really very comfortable. Let's close this door for a moment. Yeah. That handle is really helpful. AC vents on the top, light placement here. There's a hook, there's a handle. Same is the case there as well. Hook, handle, light and all those things. Air conditioning controls are placed here. So you can turn on the air conditioning. And uh, nice controls, easy to use. Get a nice display too. Meanwhile, there is actually a 12 volt charging socket along with a USB port here as well. Yeah, that's a lot of ports. And there's storage space below too. So you see, leg room and knee room isn't an issue. But... Under thigh support is much better here, obviously in the second row. And there's good amount of headroom on offer here as well. Seats are really very comfortable. I like the seats on offer. Meanwhile, you have got armrests, individual armrests. And these are captain seats for the second row of passengers. Here, there are cup holders. Here, there is storage space as well. So yeah, practicality wise, it's pretty good. That is the dashboard of the car. Do you like the dashboard of the car? Do let me know because I know the center console reminds you of BMW cars. Let's get outside from here. Let's get to the front row where all the action lies. If I press this, will this open? No, you have to open it separately. So the MG Gloucester is actually equipped with a lot of features, some of which are segment leading as well, like for a fact that it gets a massaging function only for the driver, memory seats, you can save up to two people's settings, and it gets a 12-way adjustable electric seat for the driver. For the co-driver, that is the passenger, you only get an 8-way adjustable, which is still better than competition. But you do not get the massage function. You do not get the ventilation function. You get the heating function for the passenger sitting there. Again, door pockets are not that big here. This is to open the fuel lid. These are the power window controls. This is to lock or unlock the car. And this is obviously for child lock as well. Now, the quality levels are actually quite nice. The leathers, le the, leather, the leather inside this car is also nice. They have this, I don't know, there's no badging on it, but there's this metal sort of treatment. And the seat is very comfortable as well, but I found the under thigh support, not the under thigh support, I found the lower back support to be in excess here. Obviously, you can adjust it with lumbar, but I just could not find my ideal position, not the ideal position, the ideal setting to get my you know back not have too much of support. Now, under thigh support is decent at the front. The brake pedal on this car has come from a manual car for sure, because automatics have a bigger brake pedal, but this does not. It's very small. You get a proper dead pedal there. This is to open the hood of the car. There is a secret cigarette storing compartment right there. And these are the controls for the outside rear view mirror. This is for the headlight leveling, I believe. Yeah, this is for the headlight leveling. And the height of the car, it makes sure that you have to actually climb in. Okay, there is no hook or handle to hold on to here, which is kind of disappointing because the driver will need it more than anybody. Trust me on this. Now, let's just turn off the indicators. It's making so much noise. It gets automatic headlights. It gets automatic wipers. It gets a ton of features. The glove box is actually on the smaller side. Yeah, it's not that big, the glove box. And although this looks really very nice with some soft touch materials, unfortunately, lower half of the dashboard has a lot of hard plastics. This, this particular design, I, I kid you not, this particular design is reminding me of the Toyota Fortuner. Just this particular design, somehow. How? I don't know. Why? I, I mean, I'm lost for words. Anyways, you see, the dashboard is really very wide. It's very difficult to put the whole dashboard in one frame. Auto dimming inside rear view mirror, something which the MG Hector does not get. And of course, you get a mirror along with two lights on both the sides. Yeah, so the driver is not ignored here. Now, there is a sunglass holder right here on the top where usually the handle is. So it gets a handle there as well. It gets a handle there as well. And it gets so many handles. It's kind of baffling to me. Now, the steering is obviously adjustable both for reach as well as rake. Yeah, you can adjust the steering the way you want and get your get a good driving position because you sit so high up, you can see the full world from here. Yeah, this is the Emperor's Throne. 
and the center console is also very big very 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 big i told you big is going to be a lot in this car and below the front center armrest there's storage space okay that's a tata key and there's something here which i don't understand what it is so i open it can you guys tell me what it is i i i, I can't see any plug here as such okay what happens exactly maybe this is to keep some stuff you guys let me know and talking about stuff this is a crowdsourced review because there's certain things i don't understand in this car which you're going to help me with all right you see this fake carbon fiber sort of a finish here yeah let's open this now there's a wireless charging socket yeah, i mean you can keep your phone here only thing is you can't use it you can't see anything was going to be facing that way there's a 12 volt charging socket there's a usb so plenty of charging options inside this car twin cup holders and uh, this is obviously the control for the driving modes there's seven driving modes on offer yeah this sand there's rock there's eco there's sport there's snow there's mud and there is auto as well this is the auto hold function basically you don't have to stand on the brakes when you come to hold the car will automatically hold it unless and until you start applying the accelerator now this is the electric parking brake the only issue with the electric parking brake is there's no light so you don't know if it's engaged or not but you have to see it in the instrument cluster this is chrome treatment which is very subtly placed here and you see a lot of uh, silver finishing now these are three buttons let's turn this off for the moment now this is for the driver heating this is for the driver cooling and this is for the co-passenger heating the co-passenger does not get massage does not get the cooling function either the galley was kind of weird and awkward in terms of design i mean it is actually quirky and uh, you know there's this button here which honestly you will not figure out for the first time you have to press this button and then only you can shift the gears yeah that's something which takes time to get used to and there are a lot of buttons here this is obviously for downhill assist this is for traction control this is for stop start system this is for self park and this is for the electronic differential lock of the vehicle and this is for the lane keep assist so i think we've done with the center console that was pretty quick these are the controls for the air conditioning what we'll do we'll turn on the air conditioning yeah these are the controls for the air conditioning ac vents are placed lower side this is the start stop button engine start stop button the steering feels nice and it gets the flat bottom treatment too now let's just press this button right now the message request has been sent we'll wait for mg to call us back so this is the i call button this is for voice commands these are the buttons for the cruise control i don't know what this button is for i think it is for automatic braking or something of that sort adaptive cruise control probably and uh, again these are buttons for the cruise control these one to be specific this is to browse through this system of course uh, this multi information display happens to be an 8 inch this happens to be 12.3 inch again everything is big everything is massive that's what she said this happened for the second time right now these are the controls for the audio this is to pick up a call this is to actually mute the audio and this is basically to go forward drive behind drive decide you want to listen to a radio bluetooth whatever meanwhile right here these are the controls for the headlights okay there seems to be a dummy button here which does not work same as the case here there seems to be a dummy button here which does not work and these are the controls for the wipers let's use the wipers right away you see plenty of spray on offer there is a lot of spray on offer and obviously the wipers do a great job as well now let's get to the rear wipers for a moment and that is the rear wiper a good amount of spray on offer here as well yeah actually the wiper is quite big at the rear as well so how do i like the dashboard i think the dashboard design looks really very nice indeed and there are a lot of buttons here on the top firstly this is for the lights so you can turn on the lights like this yeah the lights have turned on you can see the lights actually and this is for the opening the tailgate yeah you can decide the modes of the tailgate as well now this is obviously for the sun blind yeah that's right to open or close the sun blind of the car and when i talk about the sun blind it is a sunroof sun blind this is to open the sunroof of the car so very easy nothing complex as such obviously it gets connected car tag hello mg yeah it gets hello mg i'm here open sunroof yeah there it opens she never disappoints with this command okay even if you don't say it in the right language she'll still open the sunroof because mg cars have always been opening sunroof with a voice command because everyone just using that feature only and you see sunroof is actually quite big hello mg I said that in too much Josh he didn't hear me only hello mg hi how can i help close sunroof and there the sunroof closes i love the fact they've given it a massive panoramic roof and you know what you can also open the sunroof if you so wish with the remote of the car she didn't close the sun blind thank you so much for that now this screen is very nice easy and no none, i mean nothing is complex inside weather report navigation navigation is also really very cool so right now we'll just press this button and this is actually the navigation system so okay i always agree to whatever you say i don't read what you say you see the maps are really very nice i love the maps i love how it has been done kind of fluid but it could have been a little bit more responsive now how do i get back if i want there's a button this is the only physical button i believe and here we come back 
this is for music this is for radio this is for the air conditioning so whenever you change anything of the air conditioning it actually shows you here so this comes up it's showing you the ventilation function as well so that's how the air conditioning works and it obviously you can also tune it by pressing this button and you can decide if you want to increase the weather or not the weather you can't you know change the weather you can change the climate if you want so you can change stuff here as well let's get back okay now there is a menu here obviously it has bluetooth connectivity it's got apple carplay android auto connectivity it's got the gana app which is really very slick and this is the i call button which i actually use i'm still waiting for them to call me in, in fact i pressed it by mistake in the morning and they called me a couple of times here you can decide a lot of stuff including the theme mysterious blue or business gray we'll come into gray for the moment so that's change and i mean the usual settings yeah settings your phone me settings hoti na waisi hi hai ye okay let's come to the home because i want to show you the 360 degree parking camera this is the 360 degree parking camera okay the resolution could have been lot better it's not that uh, crisp and there is this 3d view which shows you the car from a bird's eye view as well which is also pretty nice okay and like i was telling you mg is calling their call center is calling let's talk to them good morning my name is aisha i'm calling from mg motor india how may i help you uh, good morning uh, i just wanted to know can you help me understand which is the car from which this command is actually going to give you a ring early morning sure i'll surely help you with that sir may i know your name please uh, my name is faisal Okay, Mr. Faisal, there is an uh, I call feature in your head unit, so you can use that I call for this uh, information call request. So, what all can I ask you? Like, what all information can you help me with? Yeah, in any type of car features assistance, or in case of any emergency, you can use this feature. Okay, so I wanted to understand. Can you help me understand which is the car I'm sitting in right now? Uh, actually, the details are not present here because the car is not registered right now. All right. Uh, it's the MG Gloucester. You have heard of it? Yes, sir. So when is it expected to come? Can you help me with the pricing of the car I'm sitting in right now because I'm not aware of the same. Uh, the prices will be launched around the uh, festive season, which and which it is launching. It is will it will be launching around Diwali. So all the details and features or in prices will be launched at that time only. And can you help me understand what will be the rival of this car? Uh, so the rivals will be the prime SUVs that are present in the uh, market. Like um, all types of prime SUVs which are uh, luxurious as well as uh, comfortable. So all those uh, cars will be the rivals of this car. Can you help me with any name to understand better? Sir, I can't help you with the name of any car, but uh, it will be a prime SUV. Okay. Can you help me understand what is the most unique feature of the Gloucester? Yeah, sure. It will be a comfortable prime SUV. It will be having uh, many features, which will be launched at the time. Uh, it will be revealed at the time of launch only. All right. Thank you so much uh, sure. for helping me with this, and uh, you no should problem. have a great day ahead. Is there anything else I can help you with? No, that's all. Yeah, I, I was just like. irritating i'm so sorry about that that's completely fine sir thank you so much for connecting with mg motor india you were speaking with aisha have a great day you too aisha have a great day ahead bye thank you this is such a slick feature in this car if you are feeling lonely any moment you just call them and they are so responsive they are always accommodating like i have called them randomly at any time and i'm not done it intentionally because this is the button which i have accidentally kept pressing all the given time and whenever i press them they always pick up they are very sweet they try their level best to help you with so that's actually a very cool feature and a usable feature i like that anyways now i was showing you the cctv cap camera that's done let's get into this this is the car you can see that car button i press this car button and you can all, all decide a lot of things follow me home headlamp you can decide how much time you want the light to be on there's something known as welcome light as well in fact when you turn on the car actually the seat moves behind to accommodate you when you turn off the car it actually moves ahead i'll show that to you i'll show that to you don't worry now what i really like about the system is it's very easy to use but i love the fact that it's got crazy ambient light colors It has got, I kid you not, sixty-four freaking ambient light colors. You can actually choose what ambient light color you want. That is so freaking cool. The ambient light is all over the place, of course. Like you can see it everywhere, but it is so cool. It even shows you there at the rear. You see that blue light coming right now? That small chin to the blue light. Yeah, yeah. So ambient light actually works really nice. I love the fact sixty-four freaking ambient light colors. Obviously, it's got a tire pressure monitor system. It it also has got fatigue alert, and there is a list of driving assistance system like forward collision warning, lane departure warning, and you can decide if you want lane keep assist with the lane departure warning, and you can decide how you want high, medium, low. That's not all. Okay, it's got blind. 
Time zone detection, which is basically oh, why who turned this off? Who turned this off? I turned it on. It's called blind zone detection. Basically, here you see that light will blink, which you should notice when I'm driving the car. Is something known as parking distance control. Again, who turned it off? I don't know why someone from my team is turning off all this motor beamer. What is happening? Okay, this is the fatigue reminder. Let's just click on this. Uh, that is on, thankfully. So, a lot of uh, these uh, advanced driving assist systems, forward collision warning, you can decide how fast you want it to be. If I put it on high now, it's kind of very intrusive because people who are like five kilometers away also you, it senses it. No, not really, but it will sense it much earlier. Low is the one to go, but then it will automatically apply brake. This is a feature we've seen in Mercedes Benz cars also. So, now obviously I've shown you a lot of these features. So, it's actually a very sick system, but what we want to hear is the audio system of the car because it gets a 12 speaker audio system, gets the Ghana app, which works really fluidly too. Which is a song I should play? Please help me with that. Let's just play this Midnight Sky. Now, disappointingly, there's no physical volume control, which means you have to press this button. Audio quality is really phenomenal. And of course, this Ghana app is connected to the internet via the connected car tech. Obviously, it's got an eSIM as well. I love the button. It just makes it so much easier to come back. And this is like the Siri button. You press it and... I'm here. I know you're always here. I know you're always here. I don't deny that. Thank you so much for being there for me all the time. Now, the steering wheel is nice to hold. You get the paddle shifters as well, which are finished in metal, not plastic. That's again a nice thing. And this instrument cluster looks really very nice because it's big again. Like I told you, big is the theme. Now, here you get an analog speedometer. On the rightmost, you get an analog tachometer. In the center, you obviously get the digital display, which has a ton of information. My only issue right now is it's very difficult to read what is the temperature as well as what is the fuel level of the car because it's a small needle right there. It's not that easy to read. Obviously, you get the odometer on the top, the clock, the ambient temperature, all that information. And it's saying 5.3 kilometers per liter is the fuel economy right now because obviously we've been sitting inside the car for a long time. Press this button, you can browse to this. So these are actually the but this is actually the button to browse to the multi-information display. And you see right now it's showing the car because obviously it's got a lot of advanced driver assistance systems. But this ad blue warning keeps coming and frustrating me. Are kilometer baki and jab ho jayenge, tab bolna. Anyways, browse through this and you can get into music, you can get into like, you can connect your Bluetooth and obviously this is for the lane keep assist. It shows you that as well. You can decide how you want the theme of the car. Display theme is comfort. We'll change it to sport right now. Sport is red. It looks better somehow. And it's very easy to use this thing. Now, it obviously gets a digital speedometer in the center too, which is obviously something which you would expect. So I'll just put it at that at the moment. Yeah, this is where the digital speedo will come. This will vanish automatically. Here we are. No, driver seatbelt not fastened. I know, of course, it's not fastened because I'm doing a vlog, bro. What's happening? So here you can browse to a lot of information as well. You can change after start what is happening. Okay, add blue warning. You're frustrating me. Please stop it. Okay, you see, that is a tire pressure monitor. I love it. Battery voltage, fuel range, 263 kilometer, instant fuel economy. This is the digital speedometer. So a lot of information, really nice system to use. So how's the horn? Ah, it's kind of meek. Not that impressive. Anyways, there are a couple of more interesting features inside this car. So first and foremost, when I turn off the car, listen to it, okay? Goodbye. She actually tells me goodbye. Well, that's interesting. Let's get outside. Why are we doing going outside right now? Because I've kind of shown you almost everything inside this car, bar one feature, which I have to show you still. All right, here we go. Close the door. Now I'm going to lock the car, obviously. So here we go. Lock the car. Now let me show you. You see, this is obviously for the lane keep assist and all those features which this car has. I press this button, I keep it pressed, it actually opens the windows. And see the speed at which the power window opens. It also opens the sunroof of the car. That's really nice. That's really slick. I love it. Okay, now obviously a lot of VW cars have this feature, so it's not really as hyped as I should be making it. So press this button and you can lock it as well. There you go. Actually, the power windows go fast. They're like really fast. Close the sunroof of the car as well. And there is only one feature which I'm not showing you yet, which is the self-park feature, which I will show you while driving. Let's get going right away. All right, we're all set to go. First things first, let me tell you that it has got a heat absorbing windshield. Yeah, windscreen is heat absorbing. It gets height adjust for the front seat belts. The mirrors are actually getting the heating function. So that in the snow, it melts the snow and it's easier to see. It also gets a memory function. That's kind of cool. It gets a PM 2.5 F filter straight away. I'm going to press this button. Vehicle unpark left. Yeah, sure. Why not? Here, put it into reverse. And uh, actually, when you get into reverse, the mirrors, they go downwards. That's also pretty cool. Massive mirrors. Massive. I mean, really massive. All right, let's get out from here. And uh, you see, it is extremely comfortable. People come and stare at the car as if they've never seen a big full-size SUV. Okay, he's driving a compass, so you can understand the sentiments. 
because this is full sized in the real sense. Anyways, let's get going. We're into drive mode. And the steering actually feels super duper light and this car is really very easy to drive in spite of the fact that it is massive. And when I say massive, I'm not understating things. First and foremost, the problem is not of the battery. The problem is that the car is so wide, will it go? Obviously it will go. Any car, I can take it through any gully, don't worry about that. It's found a parallel parking like where? <laughs> Anyways, get going. You see, the suspension is really very soft. Okay, it's very nice, compliant because of the softness, there's some movement as well. But it just feels so nice and easy on bad roads. You see, the steering is so light, it's actually moving on its own. That's how light the steering wheel is. Okay, this is not autonomous driving, it's just that because the softness of the steering is turning on its own. Anyways, the ride is really very nice, soft, but there is that lumpiness which is there with all body on frame cars because of the platform is such. It's actually a ladder frame platform from a pickup truck. That's right, that's the reason why it is having that lumpiness, but the ride is really nice for the most part. Only thing it gets bouncy at higher speeds and yeah, it's found me a parking right now. So sweet, where should I park on top of that heap of mud? How sweet of you. Okay, we're not going to exceed 20 kilometers per hour, otherwise this self-park thing will shut. So we're going to try and park on the right side. Oh dear, again, I have to request for the parking thingy. And over bumps, you don't feel any problem whatsoever. In spite of the relatively lower profile tire, it's telling me to stop. I've stopped right now. Shift to reverse gear. We are in reverse right now. And drive backward. I'm driving backward. Come on. Yeah. And there, this is how the self-park works. Okay, okay. It's going to park in the middle of the road. So we're just going to abandon that for a moment and let's get going. So that's that. And that's enough of the self-park. And here we go straight away. Let me tell you that this is a very easy car to drive. Bad roads, no problem. Ground clearance is more than ample. Only thing is that this is a very off-road capable car with seven driving modes actually. But honestly, you would not want to take it off-road. I'll tell you why. For the simple reason is that the tires are very road-centric on this car. They are very road-centric tires on this car, which don't really bode well for off-road driving. Anyways, I'm quite baffled by the fact that it's so easy to drive. This car weighs two and a half thousand kg, so probably more. And the size is also huge. It's like a 5 BHK house. You are maneuvering all the given moment, but there's no problem whatsoever. The horn could have had a little bit more, you know, manliness. And off we go. Yeah, the gearbox, nah, it shifts at around 4,000 RPM only. It's not like, mm, you know what? If you get into sport mode, I'll take you further. No, that doesn't happen. It's got seven drive modes. There's eco sport. Okay, eco and sport are two different modes. And guess what? I'm going to get into sport mode right now. Right now it's in eco. It actually shows you all that and more here. It's all mud mode, snow mode and sport drive mode activity. Yeah, it just said that. It actually said that. Can you believe that? This car act... Okay, I'm just kidding. I just put that part from the Tata Harriers. Sport drive mode selected all apart. So, trick to you guys. Full ya. Okay, anyways, in there looking at me as he's gone mad today or what? Talking rubbish. So, we're gonna come to a halt here and uh, I'm gonna tell you something. The USB of this car is that you can actually see over other cars as well. I can see the roof of the Celeri. It doesn't have a sunroof for sure. And it occupies more than a lane actually. So drivability in the city is actually quite nice because it's very easy car to drive and the motor is also very refined. It's stellar refinement on this car. And uh, it doesn't have the diesel clatter, but it gets vocal once you start pushing it. Obviously, higher up in the rev range, you can hear a lot more of the engine inside the cabin, but you wouldn't mind it, honestly. Okay, how do I go that side? There's no space to go that side. Well, actually, the cop is like, move that and move that side. Anyways, I love the fact that in spite of the dimensions, it's an easy car to drive. It is softly sprung, but the ride quality is brilliant. The ride is definitely better than the Fortuner. It is also better than, I was going to say way better. It's not actually way better. It's better than the Endeavor. The Endeavor's ride is also really nice. Endeavor suspension is also on the softer side. Yeah, the horn could have been a little bit more louder. Maybe have that dual tone sort of, uh, not finish, but what do you do it? And making an overtake is not a problem at all because there is that grunt from the motor. It's always ready to push hard ahead without any issue whatsoever. Why did you turn on the wipers now? Traction control off. Left foot on the brake, manual mode, revving the motor. Rev still 3000 RPM and off we go. Gearbox is sleeping, wake up gearbox. You see the lane departure warning? It comes right there. The only issue is that the right lane, the right means R-I-G-H-T, which is the same thing which I was saying. Not the right lane, the right lane. I mean, sahi lane mein agar aap ho, ho wali line, it shows in green. And the lane which you are actually overstepping on, it shows in yellow. Green and yellow is so similar, the colors. You really cannot recognize much of it. And occasionally she keeps talking, telling you if there's a speed breaker ahead or a curve ahead and all those things. This is what this system actually does. Speed breaker, who cares? Because 
it just takes everything in its stride. I'm telling you the ride comfort on this car, the overall comfort on this car is absolutely mind-bogglingly phenomenal. So what powers this vehicle? Obviously, it's a, there. You see again the lane departure warning. It has lane keep assist also. I don't know why it's not working, but it actually can pull you back into a lane. Yeah, that's also there. You see, there are a lot of stuff. Actually, there's a lot of stuff. I had put this so that I can refer. Are you shutting it? Make my vlog easier. Let me read stuff from here. Okay, so I've already explained all this fatigue reminder and all that stuff. But just notice, okay? Just notice there on that mirror, you will see that light blinks a bit. Okay, if someone is in your blind spot, there it blinked. So that is the blind spot assist, which also works really very nicely. Now, because of the suspension being on the softer side, there's some amount of bounciness, but for the most part, the car is really very composed. It's stable at higher speeds, and this is a two-liter twin-turbo diesel. Yeah, twin-turbo. There are two turbochargers in this diesel engine, lending it the most power and torque in this price range. Now, obviously, the price has not been announced, but I have a rough idea, which I cannot disclose to you right now. I'm just kidding. But you know, okay, we'll stop and we'll launch and we'll talk more about it. I'm not talking because I thought you guys want an experience of yourself driving the car, so I should not speak for the moment. Anyways, it produces 218 PS of power, 218 PS of power, which comes at 4,000 RPM. The torque output happens to be 418 Newton meters, which actually comes in at 1,500 RPM peaks. I mean, it's peak till 2,400 RPM. So yes, because of which low end is good. In fact, there is this minor turbo lag, which you actually don't feel as much. Mid range is really very strong and it struggles in the top end. It struggles. The kind of struggle in the top end is such it does not want to go in the top end. That's the reason why it actually upshifts at 4,000 RPM only. Now I'm in manual control of things, which means that right now with using the paddle shifters, I've come into seventh gear, eighth gear actually. So you see, the gearbox takes its own sweet time to make the shifts. We are in eighth gear right now. I mash onto the accelerator pedal. It will not downshift. It just does not downshift. It does not give me a downshift. What is happening? Are you not giving me a downshift? That is so unfair. Anyways, I can use the paddles and downshift as well. So it will downshift if it needs to, but only if you drop to a certain speed, but actually it also upshifts. Basically what I'm trying to tell you, why am I confusing everybody right now? I'm trying to tell you this is that if I upshift and if I use manual control of things using the triptronic function on the gear lever, it will not downshift if I need a downshift. Obviously, if beyond a point the revs drop, then it will do a downshift. Otherwise, it will not give you a downshift. However, it will give you an upshift, which is kind of unfair. This is one-sided love. If you're giving me an upshift, you need to give me a downshift, blah, blah, blah. Rather, if you're not intervening with a downshift, you should not intervene by upshifting. Let me hold on to the red line. Let me see. It's marked at 6,000 RPM. It should go at least till 4 and a half, 5,000 RPM, right? Why does it shift so fast? And I'm so confused today. Why am I confused today? Because such, such kind of cars, such big, fat, massive cars, give me the vibes of a BMW and then BMW has the stock on that side, of course. So in terms of handling, because of the softer suspension, the heavy weight, the height and all these parameters, this really does not handle that well. Of course, not supposed to. It's an SUV at the end of the day. There is body roll, plenty of it. Steering doesn't offer much feel or feedback. It's on the lighter side. So it doesn't feel scary. It weighs up, but it doesn't offer you much feel or feedback. So it doesn't really, you know, push you to drive faster or harder because that's not the intention of this car in any way whatsoever. And I love the fact that bad roads are just taken without any issue because this car, look, look, this is a bad road. I don't care. Why am I driving on the good part? I'll drive on the bad part. Look, absolutely no problem, no rattles, none of that, just smoothness and it actually gobbles up because of the bigger wheels. 19 inches do a great job. It's like ready for action every time. Why have we stopped here? Some amount of wheel spin on offer doesn't spin its wheels much because tires have a lot of grip on the road for sure. Now, I have just not turned on forward collision warning for high, but I've turned off automatic emergency braking. I like the fact that they have actually managed to do a great suspension setup, obviously soft yet compliant enough and that little bit movement, that jiggliness, lumpiness rather, <laughs> of a body on frame platform is obviously there. So there it's telling me collision, collision, collision. And then before it could apply brakes, I only applied brakes because I'm like little, I, I'll tell you honestly, these systems are really very nice, but not really meant for Indian conditions because I know now people jump from anywhere. I, I, with one of the luxury cars I was driving, that system was on. And uh, you know, we all drive like, uh, we have to take a quick maneuver. All of a sudden you see someone is guarding the plants in the rightmost lane. And then I'm coming at like 80 kilometers per hour on a highway. And then I see that I immediately turn. But before I turn, the system is like, oh my God, someone's guarding the plants. You can't kill that person. You can't collide with that person. Applied brakes full on. 
what is more of a panic because it it flies brakes so fast that judders and I almost had a mini heart attack. Now I am heartless, so I did not feel that. But still, you just have to be really very careful with these systems. So we just turn them off at the moment. That's the way to <laughs> go about it. I didn't turn them off intentionally. Neha is turning it off because she is getting scared of the system. Anyways, so these all driver systems are really very nice. Of course, at this price range, nobody offers all this and more. Now the elephant in the room is that what does this car compete with? Because obviously, MG is trying to pitch it against the Toyota Land Cruiser Prado, and of course the Jeep Grand Cherokee as well. However, none of these cars are on sale anymore because they have been discontinued because they don't meet the BS6 cut, which means that the Gloucester will eventually compete. With the Toyota Fortuner and the Ford Endeavor and the Mahindra Altima, just see it like kind of glides. It's just a roof. The suspension is so smooth. It just glides. It's like I'm actually on water. I'm going over the waves. It's like I know I'm not going to put that Rithik Roshan dancing one which I put in the previous video. Tell me. How did you tell your collision collision? Tell me. How did you tell? Listen to this. Yeah, that is a lot of wheel spin on offer. Now, because this is a heavy car with a powerful engine, it also loves to drink fuel. Yeah, that's right. It returns a mileage between six to eight kilometers per liter, depending on your driving style. You can also get it to five kilometers per liter if you drive like an absolute lunatic, like Neha has been doing, and she's dropping the mileage of the car again and again. She's punching me. She's not even driving the car. I'm just kidding. Anyways, the fact is that. MG realizes that that's why this car has a massive fuel tank, 75 liters fuel tank capacity. That is massive indeed. That's what she said. This is the fourth time I've said that in this vlog. Actually, it's the third time. Anyways, you see the performance is really very nice, and this car is actually sold as the Maxxis D90 in certain markets. I think down south. When I say down south, I don't mean Chennai or Bangalore. I mean in Australia, it is sold as the LDV D90. Okay, now the LDV is a British brand. Basically, it belonged to Leyland or something like that, and they got bankrupt. Sack Motor took it. In fact, it says Sack Motor on the bottom left of the tailgate in Australia for this particular car with the Maxxis logo on it. So that's the history of things. Wherever this car is sold, it is known for its value for money quotient, and that's the reason I believe they're going to price this very attractively in the Indian market, giving it plenty of like they've already given it plenty of features, but giving it a very attractive price, which will definitely appeal to a lot of people as well. The engine is smooth, it's refined, it's nice, it's punchy. The gearbox is slow, but it's comfortable, it's nice, it's refined, and there are plenty of features on offer as well. So as I see it, this particular car, the MG Gloucester, which is only sold in the Indian market as the MG Gloucester, is a fantastic, comfortable SUV with a lot of road presence and certain. Really lies performance and gives you the feel good factor as well. So guys, this is my vlog of the MG Gloucester. I could have done faster kick down. Now it's doing once I've got into normal drive mode. Otherwise, right now I've been driving in manual mode. Manual mode, like you can get into manual mode in time, but right now it's not in manual mode. I can still shift gears, and they're showing me the gear levers and condition for shift not met. Condition for shift gear is not satisfied. Okay, the car wants satisfaction. So what you're going to do is going to get manual mode. And actually, what manual mode does it shows you the M5 in the cluster. Actually, it means M1, M2, M3, all those modes. And what it does, it doesn't give you a downshift. However, if you get into drive mode and you still use the paddles, it will give you a downshift whenever you need it. Yeah, gearbox could have been much faster in terms of shifts. Smooth, yes. This car is about big comfort and easiness, not about being fast and rattling you. This is going to sell very well in the Indian market. Take it from me because of the size, because of the road presence, because it drops everything. It drops everything out on the road. It just is so freaking humongous. So guys, this is my vlog of the MG Gloucester, and uh, I think MG has done a great job. If they price it well, it's going to sell well. What do you think, Neha? I'm going to play it. Now you have to play it. Let's go left. Don't play it. Bye. Bye. See you in the next vlog.